Yes, my name is Bench and welcome back to another StarMade Logic tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll build ourselves a nice tileable system that we can use to detect when our rails have collisions and actually switch stuff off or do other stuff, whatever we want it to do. This works with the basic rail. It's really handy. So let's jump right on into it. So we're here in a blank sector and what we'll do is we'll create a new ship and this will be the ship that we do the demonstration on. So we'll start by building out our main rail and this is going to be the rail that we actually do our detecting and colliding and everything on. Uh, it'll be it. So that seems like a good length. So now what we'll do is we'll build out our first circuit and then we'll use copy and paste to actually copy it across the rest of it. So we'll place down a button directly against our rail and then we'll place out a activation module like so. And then we'll select our activation module and we'll place a not gate in between the two. Finally, we'll grab our activation module and place it into a AND gate and we're gonna put it on top. We're also gonna grab our button and put it into that same AND gate. And then we'll take that AND gate and put it into a OR gate at the back like so. And that's all we need to do for this circuit. We can toggle this if we'd like to get the NOT gate active and then what we'll do is holding control to access our advanced build tools we'll go in there and click copy and we're going to copy that and then using paste we can paste it along the rest of our rail system here save us a lot of time in the process so there we go we've got it all laid out you'll see if we fly underneath all the NOT gates are active at the moment that's good and so we will build ourselves our little controller section over here. To start off, we'll place a activation module. Next, we'll place that going into a OR gate like so. We'll select the OR gate and place it into another activation module. And then we'll take that same activation module and place it back into the OR gate. And you'll see to demonstrate what this does, you can see if we toggle the activation on the front on, it goes on and switches the activation module on at the back and no matter what I toggle this now it's going to stay on. So now we can take our activation module at the back and we're going to connect it up to all these activation modules behind like so. You can see they're all selected and then on the top row what we'll do is we'll connect these in a snake format so we're going to select one connect it to the one next to it with V then we're going to select that one use the same process like that so each one is kind of daisy chained to the next one and this is just to save us having to go back and forth between connecting stuff it's a lot easier when it's uh, one input going into all the outputs because we can just go along the line but otherwise we'd have to go cv cv and it's a pain so it's a lot easier to go this way and it also opens up some other stuff for us as well so you'll see and that's us built under there and now what we can do is we're just going to build ourselves our circuit that actually triggers our uh, reset or our stop so we'll place a activation module we'll take that uh, no we place a button with the rail next to it and then we're going to take that button and we're going to use shift V to connect it to our big long rail like so. Now we're going to take our last OR gate in the chain so you can see everything kind of builds up to this one. And we're going to connect it to both that button we just created as well as the activation module underneath like so. And now what we will need to also do is make sure that our reset for when we reach our ends is also triggering properly otherwise the system won't reset so that's as easy as grabbing the button on either end of our rail and we're going to be connecting it to our OR gate right on that same line and we'll do it on this end as well see and it's simple as connecting it like so so they're all connected now and now we can create our two buttons that are going to be controlling our rail back and forth so we got this one here and what we can do is not selecting uh, we can place the two on top or behind or wherever 
and these are going to trigger the back and forth and you can see I can connect them just by pressing C and shift V onto that main line again and then we're going to take those, both those input buttons and we're going to put it into this first activation module and that's pretty much it so what we'll do is we'll also place down a rail speed controller and just put it straight into an activation module just so we get the most amount of speed out of it so we can see it without demonstration so and that's pretty well it what we will do is just while we're placing stuff we'll fly over here and we'll just toggle ourselves this button on the back so now we're all set we'll grab ourselves a new ship just to demonstrate things on the actual rail itself and we'll, we'll place a rail docker on it we can even extend it out so it's a big block so we can see it moving a bit better drop the rail docker down and we'll obviously dock it to there and there we go so we'll push the button and you can see it all moves along like so it works fine and when it gets to the end you'll see the rail will change everything stopped now if we go back the other way you can see same deal it's going to move along nice and comfortably at a decent pace and when it gets to the end everything will change so we'll jump back into build mode for the actual thing and the main thing about this is the possibility of collisions so we'll drop a block here and it will collide with it so watch what happens it'll go along as we want it'll get to the end and go no nah, i can't go any further so it'll do a second attempt and that second attempt is what we capture and that triggers everything to update so now we can move back again everything works exactly how it should get to the end and stop or we can go the other way again if the server would stop auto saving <laughs> go again come on Server under heavy load, and that's not useful. This to the end, and stop. Which is great. And this works for a whole heap of things, so if we run it, take take that out, run it to the very end, you'll see it'll stop again. If we jump out, we're right next to our other block here, and we can easily kind of extend out a pole. And chain docking works with all this as well. So we'll do that. You can see we would then dock something to the end. In this case, we'll build ourselves another little example ship. So we will drop ourselves a rail docker onto it. It doesn't really matter what the shape is. It just needs to be a big blob of blocks that it can't get past. Like so. That'll work. And we'll spin us around and we'll dock to the end here. So there we go. So there's chain docking one onto two, which is actually on our rail. And we'll push the button again, and you'll see it'll get to a point where it can't move anymore. And same deal, everything stops. So and this is a great way to stop sort of if your rail also starts bouncing, trying to move stuff along. It's a good way to get stuff to stop or to detect when things have finished moving in a particular direction. You can use it for all kinds of things. It's all tileable, really tileable along any edge. The last thing you might be interested in doing is adding in your own stop button as well. Obviously, because the system's a little bit more complicated, you want to make sure you're adding it in the correct way. And it's as easy as adding it in to this last OR gate or if you don't want to add it into there you can easily add it into both the activation module on the bottom and the one which triggers the stop so what we can do just to demonstrate that is fly over here we're going to jettison if I jumped into the right ship core which is this one on the back we'll jettison ourselves here we don't need you anymore and we'll go push the button so it's moving along and we can easily push stop and stop it go back the other way push stop and stop it back the other way push stop and stop it and it will still function exactly how it should every other time take that <laughs> I don't think it liked that very much 
push. And there we go. We've catapulted it off into oblivion. That's pretty far. So that's how you build our little detection rig. It's really useful. I look forward to using it in some of my builds. My name is Bench. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe for more StarMade Logic tutorials. I'll see you next time.